Song you, pastor here at Register Chapel. We welcome everyone. Uh, thank you so much for being with us in worshiping God with us this morning. Just to remind you, our church entire facility is still uh, closed down. If you have any question or need or need to share prayer requests, please contact our church office by phone or email. We'll circulate your prayer requests. All right, shall we? Pray to God as we worship our living Lord. O oh God, the Lord of Easter, we give thanks to you for giving us this beautiful Sunday morning. Although we cannot be together physically in your house, we are connected through our prayers and spirit, through your powerful movement in our midst as we worship you and praise your name this morning. We pray that you will touch each one's heart. Allow us to open our hearts to you so that we may experience and, and encounter our living God and receive that power and joy of resurrection with which we can face our life challenges and tasks we will face this week. Bless our time of worship through your powerful presence in our midst. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to online services for Registered Chapel here in Stafford. Um, check out the Facebook page. We have a new street name. And the trivia question this week is going to be to answer what the new street name is. So just a heads up. You might want to run up here during the week sometime, drive by, and check it out so that you can answer that question. My name is Dawn. This is my partner, Anthony, and we're the contemporary worship leaders here at Register Chapel. This is our partner, Ethan Murphy. He is the choir director here for our traditional service. If you're interested in joining any of these teams, just shoot us an email. Go to registerchapel.org. 
and you'll find our email addresses there. Just shoot us an email. No audition is necessary. This is Amazing Grace. so that we can at least see each other's faces for once during the quarantine time. So if you could, we'd really appreciate it. Alas, and did my Savior bleed.
Till you find that gospel beat Cause it's all you'll ever need opportunity to come together and we thank you that even in the darkest hour even now in seclusion we can praise your holy name we can come together as tech through technology god we we are so blessed we are so blessed especially in this country that we don't have to hide in upper rooms anymore thank you father we pray for those around the world who are fighting this evil that is the virus. We, we pray for those who are not free to openly praise you and sing to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus. We pray for our brothers and sisters. We pray that this message reaches those who may not know you yet and moves them to turn back to you, Lord. We pray for our pastor and his message. May we learn from it, may we grow from it, and carry it into our lives. This week and always, in your son's precious name, we pray. Amen. The scripture for this morning is taken from the book of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 23. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the door of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sin of any, they are retained. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Yeah. 
Ah, oh, amazing. <laughs> I'm so blessed to be here with our music ministers. The passion and praises to God's name. I really hope that you will feel that spiritual fervor and passion we experience in this place today. Um, We've never experienced the contagion of this magnitude in our lifetime. Uh, the corona pandemic is such a traumatic experience to all of us. We have a growing concerns over our physical health and uh, unemployment, economic recession, and how health experts are uh, concerned about uh, increase of substance abuse and mental disorder depression, anxiety, and even suicidal thoughts during this time. And I heard that uh, also domestic violence and abuse are happening more frequently during this time. We are walking through a, a uncharted uh, terrain during this uncertain time. Through TV or our personal conversation, we sometimes get to hear of what happens to our military service members when they come back home from battlefields. Many of our brothers and sisters come back home wounded, physically or emotionally, and trying to readjust themselves to their regular routine with their family and friends. And some of them go through very severe depression and anxiety, and suffering from the flashbacks and nightmares about their combat experiences, even isolate themselves from their loved ones. Our mental, emotional capacity has a certain limit. We are only human after all. When our capacity of tolerance is stretched all too much, our mind just suddenly collapses and shuts down, being unable to operate, even endure emotional and mental intensity. Uh, this symptom is called PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. We all are vulnerable to this uh, condition. When we experience or even witness a traumatic incident, a life-threatening experience, then we can lose our mental capacity of tolerance and also managing our daily life. Uh, I wonder whether the disciples were going through PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, after Jesus' death. Uh, obviously, they were traumatized by what they just recently witnessed at the hill of Golgotha three days ago. When they walked with Jesus side by side, they saw something amazing with their own eyes. Jesus preached the gospel, the message of the kingdom of God with such authority. He even cured the ill and the sick with a miraculous power. He even cast away the unclean spirits of demons. And who can do that? So in their own eyes, Jesus was literally and truly an extraordinary man, a miracle healer, a charismatic leader, a gifted teacher, and the Lord. Then, three days ago, they painfully witnessed that the Lord Jesus Christ, who was supposed to be mighty in delivering the people from their enemies, was arrested, wounded, crushed, crucified, died on the cross as a helpless, powerless victim. Such turbulent, unexpected death of Jesus was quite shocking, striking to them. And I'm pretty sure they didn't even know how to process what they experienced, such trauma. And how can they even process their grief? They were deeply disturbed in their hearts and minds. When it was evening on the first day of the week, which was the third day after Jesus' death, Disciples gathered to gather in one house. And in verse 19 into this passage said, The doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. 
The disciples had to deal with their continual hostility from their Jewish community against them. And they were uh, traumatized and terrified during this time. What was worse, I venture to imagine that they had to struggle with that guilt for their betrayal and shame for their failure to protect or rescue their Lord from the furious mob and the religious leaders. As a matter of fact, just a few days ago, when Jesus was arrested in front of their eyes in Gethsemane, all the male disciples ran away for their lives. Even Peter, one of the closest disciples of Jesus, denied the Lord three times. Now, three days later, these disciples even did not know how to process, how to go through, even cope with this traumatic experience. So they gathered together in one house and locked the doors out of fear. And they were hiding themselves behind the door. Don't we see ourselves in the disciples? When our life gets out of control, when the circumstances are beyond our capacity to handle, we are in panic, right? We get anxious and worried and we fear and we are afraid of what's happening and over uncertainties of our lives. And so we just shrink down and we try to build our inner hidden place, the panic room where we hide ourselves, try to wait until the situation is over. Yet in our inner hidden place, we find ourselves disturbed, distressed, and lonely. And we suddenly cry without knowing where to go and what to do, even how long it will take for us to go back to our normal. In verse 19 says, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. While the disciples were undergoing a fear and anxiety and guilt and shame in their hidden place, the penny room, Jesus mysteriously entered that place. Ah. The very first word Jesus spoke to them were, Peace be with you. Our Lord clearly knew their fragile condition at the moment, paid immediate attention to their urgent need at the moment, Jesus did not force his disciples to open the door of their house to the Lord, but gently entered their room, did not accuse or condemn them for their betrayal or cowardice, but the Lord embraced their disturbed hearts with his presence, the profound peace that surpasses all understanding. What's more, Jesus even showed his hands inside to his disciples. What was Jesus showing? The marks of the nails in his hands, the mark of the spear in his side from the cross. Jesus was showing his wounds, his disciples, in order to help them to recognize it was the Lord Jesus they knew. He did not hide his vulnerability, but showing the marks of the nails and the mark of the spear in his side, comforting them with his radical love, which was powerfully manifested on the cross. When we become vulnerable and insecure in our life, children, we tend to hide ourselves in our panic room, locking all the doors of our hearts out of fear and shame and guilt. And the Word of God tells us, the persistent message of Easter tells us it is right there in our hidden inner place. It is right there in our panic room where we hide ourselves and become vulnerable and anxious that Jesus comes. It is there that we encounter our Lord who took our sins in His own body, died on the cross on our, in our stead, on our behalf for the forgiveness of our sins. And on the third day, he rose from the dead, broke off the chains of sin and death for us. The Lord visits us. Do we remember what happened that morning on the same day? Mary Magdalene, the helpless Mary, was weeping and sobbing outside the 
empty tomb. It was right outside the tomb that Jesus rose, who rose from the dead, appeared before Mary. And in that evening, Jesus again appeared before his disciples in the panic room. If you find yourself sinking down and shrinking because of what's happening in this world, in your life, I want you to remember that the Lord of Easter, the resurrected Lord, surely visits you and comes to that very site, the tool, the hidden panic room, provides a profound peace for your disturbed heart, a profound rest for your restless soul. The Lord does not condemn us or accuse us for what we have done or what we have not done. But the Lord will validate our feeling, our fragile emotions. He wants to cover our wounded hearts with his mighty healing hands which were pierced on the cross for you and me. Do you hear the voice of the Lord? John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. And verse 21 in today's passage says, Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he has said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Ah. When Jesus entered their hidden place, the Lord provided profound peace and comfort to their hearts and began to reinvigorate their intimidated hearts through the Spirit of the living God. And Jesus breathed on them according to today's passage. What was Jesus trying to do through that bizarre act? Jesus was breathing the breath of God, the spirit of the living God. Jesus was breathing the new vitality, new life, new hope, new destiny into his disciples through the Holy Spirit. As we stay at home nowadays and self-quarantine for uh, physical distancing, don't we build an inner hidden place where we hide ourselves and out of fear and anxiety, maybe guilt and shame? The Lord wants us to remember that. The Lord visits us, enters our hidden place and provides the profound peace we're looking for. It is right there in our vulnerable place that we encounter our risen Lord our Lord casts out all fear out of our hearts and reveals our heart with peace and courage. So we profess with confidence like the psalmist in Psalm 23, 4. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod, your staff, they comfort me. Can we read this? Even though we walk through the darkest pandemic all around the world, we fear no evil. For our Lord, the Lord of Easter, is with us. His rod and staff, they comfort us. You're not alone in this journey. And we are all in this together. What's more important to remember, our Lord who rose from the dead, has conquered the world, is with you here and now. So we praise our Lord, singing, Because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Because He lives, all fear is gone. Because 
beholds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives all oh, those people said Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for speaking to us according to your word. We find ourselves in the disciples who are terrified, traumatized, hiding themselves in a hidden, locked place. But we are thankful for your message that you visit our dark sites where we hide ourselves and become vulnerable and insecure. The Lord of Easter invades into our lives, brings the profound sense of peace and comfort we are looking for reinvigorating our hearts through the Holy Spirit allow us to hold on to that hope walk through this challenging pandemic with a courageous spirit audacious spirit and faith in you help us to demonstrate that faith as people of Easter standing on the spiritual solid rock Jesus Christ who rose from the dead broke off the chains of sin and death for us and has conquered the world for us enable the sons and daughters to claim and proclaim their hope the power of Easter in our everyday life especially during this uncertain time we pray for your mercy upon our human species our brothers and sisters in this world we pray for your powerful intervention into our vaccine research. We desperately need a cure for our physical health and mental emotional stability, Lord. We pray for the, all the health workers, uh, first responders, and service members who risk their lives on the front line of this crisis. Shield them with your mighty hands as they seek to save more lives. Have mercy upon those whose lives have been affected by this challenge. Especially those who mourn and grieve over the losses of their loved ones. Comfort your sons and daughters with your healing hands, Lord. We pray that people will come back to their senses and return to you with a contrite and broken heart so that they may receive and experience the peace and comfort, the courage and hope in you. Allow us to go through this process as an opportunity for spiritual awakening, taking this as your divine moratorium over all human activity. Literally, Lord, we come to a complete halt as a nation, as the world. Help us to come back to you with prayers with repentance. Enable us not to wait until we hit the rock bottom, but come back to you much earlier and receive your blessing, your mercy, your healing, so that we may celebrate restoration, renewal, revival in you. Have mercy upon us, Lord. Thank you for being with us all the time and thank you for loving us no matter what. We love you. This is our prayer in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Now it's time for offering. Uh, even when we cannot physically gather together in the, a church for worship, uh, our church still operates. Our ministry's missions are heavily dependent upon your generous, even sacrificial offering. I'm so thankful to know that many of our church members and friends have stepped up and been sending your offering to our church. Thank you so much for your generous offering and continued support and prayers for our ministry. Uh, we have an online giving available, which is found on our church website, reschurchchapel.org. You can mail in your offering to our church, or you can bring your offering to the church when we come back. Offering is a time for us to recommit ourselves to the Lord. Through this offering time, shall we think of ways of making ourselves available for others, especially those who are more vulnerable during this time? If you struggle with finance because of unemployment or, or if you know somebody who needs help, would you please contact our church office or me? Our church family will step up to provide help for you. We are all in this together. Shall we pray to bless our offering before the Lord? Lord, You are the creator, redeemer, sustainer of our lives. We are compelled, especially nowadays, to acknowledge your sovereign authority over our lives as the owner, as the author of our life. Help us to live our life according to your plan and purpose, following your owner's manual, so that we may bring glory and honor to you and experience profound peace and comfort and fulfillment that comes from you. Wherever this offering is used, we pray that your glory will be manifest, the love of Christ will be experienced and celebrated in multiple tangible ways. All for your glory, for your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Sunday morning online service next Sunday at 10 a.m. It's a good time to get together and, and in prayers and spirit as we worship God. We'll continue with our Easter sermon series. Next Sunday we will explore how to deal with our skeptical Thomas inside during this time of uncertainty. Uh, go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. Do not hesitate to come back to the Lord. Now is the time to return to the Lord with a broken, contrite heart. The Lord is waiting for you. Want to provide profound sense of peace and comfort and healing and mercy upon you. The amazing grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the steadfast love of God the Father, the joyful fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. Amen. Thank you. 